presentation of the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. San Jose Police calling all cars. Broadcast 46. Pick up a black coupe. License number 6 Alfred 1167. 6 Alfred 1167. Occupants of this car shot Officer John Buck when he attempted to question them. Go get them, boys. That is all.
I have here on the platform a telephone and a radio receiving set tuned in on the police broadcasting station. I will telephone for a police car, and any of you who wishes may check the time it takes the officers to respond. All ready? Now I will call for the car. Uh, give me the police department, please. Hello? Uh, this is the chief, Sergeant. Uh, send the car over to me right away. I'm at the auditorium. Now we'll turn on the radio. Friends, 
Hello? Yes? What? Very well. I'll be right over. Ladies and gentlemen, I must ask to be excused. The officer who demonstrated our police radio to you a few moments ago has just been shot. At headquarters, Moon reports the details of the shooting to Chief Black. And that's the story, Chief. We got the license number, and the car was a small black coupe. Let's see. That license number was... 6A1167. All right. Ed? Yes, Chief? Got that description? Yes, sir. Ask uh, Sheriff Emig to put it on the teletype to all points and broadcast it to our Powell cars. Yes, sir.
while Bondi bandages her wounded sweetheart, the law's invisible dragnet is stretched across the peninsula and the Bay Area. The police radio spins an escapeless web as it deploys officers to all strategic points leading out of San Jose and into San Francisco and Oakland. And up on the coast from Eureka to El Centro, from the Sierras to the sea, the police teletype picks out the warning to all officers to pick up the wanted black coupe. The Bayshore Highway is barricaded, and every passing car is stopped, and its occupants are scanned and questioned. The Bay Bridges and ferries are watched to prevent escape to the north. Route 101 is blocked between Gilroy and San Jose. Officers are stationed outside Livermore on Route 99. Escape to the south is cut off. Watch the infrequent cars that pass the spot. Here comes a car. Turn over your motor. No, that was a sedan. Wish I could smoke. You better not. We don't want anybody to see us. Yeah, that's right. Remember, this time we shoot. Don't worry. There's no witnesses out here. And the story is... They resisted arrest. Right. They'll get what's coming to them. On your toes. Here comes another one. Get that gap ready. Yes, sir. It's a coupe, and that's the license number. Let's go. Force him over. You didn't give Buck a chance. Hey, hurry. Hold it. What's the matter? They got a woman in there. Ah, nuts. Stick up your hands, you three. Now, come out of there holding them up. I'll open that door. What's all this about? What do you want with us? You're under arrest. What for? Assault with a deadly weapon with intent to commit murder. That's ridiculous. Come on, cut out that truck. Get out of there. Hurry up, you. Look here, you guys are all wrong. There's some mistake. Listen, mister. Nothing would give me more pleasure than an excuse to shoot you. Now you shut up or I'll plug you for a distant arrest. Back in police headquarters, Joe Matlock, his pal, Sam Thomas, and Bonnie face Chief Black. Look here, Chief. What's the big idea? My friend here is sick. He's got an appendicitis attack. I was just taking him over to the doctor in Oakland when these two men arrested us. Appendicitis attack, huh? He's not suffering from appendicitis. He's got three bullet holes in him. Ed? Yes, sir? I have the sergeant fingerprint these three prisoners. And then take this man who's suffering from appendicitis and have him treated for his bullet wounds. Yes, sir. Listen, Chief. You got a bum steer. What do you want to think upon us for? We ain't done nothing. Why, I'm a plumber. Ha! I got credentials. Let me show you my papers. We're on the up and up. Yeah? Well, if you're on the up and up, then you won't mind being fingerprinted, you know, for elimination. But, gee, that's just a lot of time wasted. You better let us go. I've got to get my pal to the hospital. Yes, please, sir. He's in great pain. I don't doubt it. Those police revolvers leave ugly wounds. But, oh, Chief, there's no reason Take them out, Ed. Take them out. Take them out. the dope on the mugs and the prints of those three prisoners, sir. We made two of them. The girl don't seem to have a record. Mm-hmm. Sam Thomas served time in my own reformatory. And Joseph Matlock. Hmm, what a nice long record he's got. Three-time loser to boot. What's the doctor say? Hey, he's touching up the guy now. He'll send him in as soon as he's ready. Hey, what's that noise? There's quite a crowd outside the jail, sir. They heard about Buck being shot, and they're collecting from all sides. Hmm, I don't like that. How many men are in headquarters now? Uh, half a dozen, I guess. All right, don't let anyone go home. I may need all of them in a little while. Yes, sir. <laughs> Treated for his wounds, 
wound and then is thrown into a cell with his frightened partner, Sam. Chico, what are we going to do? Don't worry, don't worry. We're okay, kid. What makes you so sure? Listen, I beat the rat before and I can beat it again. Yeah, but, gee, you shouldn't have plugged that car. Quiet. You didn't see me plug no car, did you? What do you mean? Oh, I get it. No, of course not. I, I didn't see anything. That's right. And you ain't going to squeal, are you? Well, you know better, me better than that, Joe. Yeah, well, I ain't so sure. You ain't been through as many of these things as I have. They'll have to get tough with you. That don't scare me. I ain't squawking, but I'm worried. Well, forget it. This is going to be a pipe. They ain't got anything on us. Oh, I wish I could be sure. That other bull saw us. He ain't certain it was us he saw. Why, when I get a mouthpiece down here from Frisco, we'll be out of here in no time. Gee, I hope so. If that guy dies, this will be murder. Yeah, only we didn't do it, see? He don't know nothing about it. <laughs> dozen idlers outside the jail grows momentarily. Soon, a hundred people stand in the streets, staring into the jail windows. Fifteen minutes later, two hundred people have gathered. Traffic is jammed, and stores are added to the crowd every second. Within an hour, a thousand citizens mill around the jail, allowing themselves to be whipped into mob frenzy by a self-appointed leader who addresses them from the top of an automobile. Are you citizens or are you citizens? <laughs> The friend of many of us, John Buck, was shot down in cold blood tonight. The man that shot him is in that building. Are we going to let stand and let by and let him get by with a crime as black as that? <laughs> Are we going to see our taxes spent on a long and costly trial for a ruffian, a rascal who might work the sympathy of a jury to the point where he might gain his freedom? <laughs> or shall we take the law in our own hands? So we act as our grandfather's act in the days of 49 and tender out the sort of justice this sort of subject does. Yeah, 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 yeah. to protect the jail against attack from the maddened crowd outside, summons Matlock to his office. The criminal, conscious of the mutterings of the crowd, looks uneasily at the bars in the high, narrow window, glances carefully at the chief, switches, weaves back and forth in his feet like an animal at bay. Matlock, I want you to tell me about that shooting tonight. What do you mean, Matlock? My name is John. Uh, if it is, it's an alias. Your name is Matlock. Here's your record. You see, I know more about you than you know about yourself, perhaps. Now, you'd better tell me about that shooting. I don't know what you're talking about. No? Listen to that. No. What, what's all that shouting about? Oh, don't poker face me, Matlock. They want your hide out there. You shot a police. I didn't, I tell you. I can explain everything I've done tonight. I can account for every place I've been. You're lying, Matlock. I know you shot that police. You can't prove it. Well, listen once more. Well, Matlock, so you can explain everything? Sure. What would you rather do, explain a lie to that bloodthirsty mob out there or tell me the truth? Oh, gee, Chief, you wouldn't turn me over to them, would you? I don't know, Matlock. I might have to. No, 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 no. You couldn't do that. No, you mustn't do that, Chief. Well, do you want to come clean? Okay, okay. I'll come clean. Did you shoot Officer Buck tonight? I don't know what his name is. Well, did you shoot a police officer? Well, yeah. Why? Oh, I don't know. I'm a hard guy, Chief. I don't take back talk from no one, and I don't like fools. So you go around shooting them, is that it? Well, not exactly, but this big flat foot ran us into the curb, and I wouldn't take any of his lips. He started snooping around, so I let him have it. I can't afford having anybody monkeying around me. Why not? Well, you see, I'm a three-time loser, Chief. I'm out on parole. I know if he found anything on me, it'd be just too bad. So I took my chance of shooting it out. And here you are. Yeah, here I am. Open the doors, but I don't want any of that racket. 
I'll stand back six paces from that door when I count three. The man that's any closer when I open the door is going to be sorry. Ready. One. Two. Three. Now, what is it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who's the ringleader of this outfit? I'll talk for these citizens, Chief. Well, what do you want? One of our peace officers was shot tonight. He may die. Yes? We want to settle this matter in our own way. We want to take the whole thing off your hands. You want to lynch this man? Yeah, him and his partner and that girl. You want to avenge the attempted murder of a police officer? Yeah. And to do that, you would set aside the authority vested in the police department? I don't know what you're talking about. We want this man's body. Now, look here. You're not very consistent. And demanding the right to lynch this man, you infer no confidence in the police department a member of which you are trying to avenge. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, but... Uh, does it? Why, you don't understand. I do understand. You have no faith in the police department. Oh, no, it isn't that. We have faith in the police department, all right. Oh, you do? No, we do. How about the rest of you? Yeah. Okay. Then this is all I've got to say to you. Go home and cool off. You say you have faith in the police department. Very well. There are six officers in here armed with submachine guns. They are pledged to keep the peace even at the cost of human lives. You say you have faith in your police. Well, let me assure you that these men will turn these machine guns on you as the lawbreakers and offenders to the police that you now are unless you disperse at once and go to your home. <laughs> Clinching stand taken by the police that night averted a serious breach of the peace. The citizens went quietly to their homes, and Sam Thomas and Joe Matlock were held in the San Jose jail while their victim, John Buck's life, hung in the balance. Finally, on April 5th, John Buck died. Thomas and Matlock were formally charged with murder, and on June 19th went on trial for their lives. On July 2nd, the jury returned a verdict of guilty with recommendation of life imprisonment. And on July 5th, Thomas was sentenced to San Quentin, Quentin Prison and Matlock to Folsom Prison for the rest of their natural lives. Hello there, Rio Grande. Remember me? You got me started on that cracked gasoline the other day. Sure. I knew you'd be back. How did you like it? Well, I guess there is a difference in gasolines after all. The old bus seems to have more pep, all right. I don't have to shift gears so often, either. And it certainly starts in a hurry. So fill her up on Rio Grande Cracked again. Boy, I'm sold. I told you so. That cracked gasoline ought to sell for more money because Rio Grande stations are certainly offering the best gasoline value in this market.
was written and produced by William N. Robeson. The orchestra was conducted by Claude Sweeten. In tonight's dramatization, you have heard the following radio artists. The role of Chief Black was played by Walter White. Carl Conkey played Patrolman Moon. Laura Jane Heller played Bonnie. Ed Max played Patrolman Buck. Harold Helvenston played Sam Thomas. Arnold McGuire played Joe Matlock. Harold Perry played Mac. And George Levins played Ed. <laughs>